Welcome. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. And all the leaders of the churches who are here, different denominations and different perspectives, I pray that our being together will actually impact every life. So that by the grace of God, all that upliftment we're looking for in every church and in the whole land and beyond here to the rest of the country, the Lord will do at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that the message of the word will not be tossed aside, sifted, but everything the Lord has to say, and he says it directly to every heart, will accept, or work on them, act on them, and the blessings of God will not only come to us, but flow from us to the rest of the land, the rest of our country, and the rest of our continent and all continents, the rest of the world, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you at this time and bless your name. What a great God, a good God, a gracious God you are. We're asking, Lord, that today your word will impact every life, every ministry in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray, Lord, you take us from the level we are now and take us to a higher level. What we have to do, what we have to preach, how we ought to minister so that we'll have excellence in life and ministry. We pray that we impact into every life, even today, in Jesus' name. For all our ministers and workers and professionals and business people who are here and who are gathered everywhere, linking and joining with us, both in our country and all over the world, we're praying that your word will impact every life in an unprecedented manner in Jesus' name. Help us to forget every other thing and to focus on you now and receive everything you have for us. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. <clears throat> God bless you. You can sit down. Once again, we want to remember that when you seen the life and the ministry of Moses, to the children of Israel for our text and for all the deliberations we are having. And I told you about what is referred to as transferable concept. That means a concept, a commission, a commandment, a, com a commitment that we see in other people and we say, if God can do that, through him or through her, then I present myself is the same God, is the same grace, is the same power, is the same anointing, the same unction that he gave to all the people that is given to us. And they succeeded in their own time. And they glorified the Lord and uplifted the people in their own time. They came to people who were under oppression. It's not anything new. And the ministers that he sent, they lifted up the people from their oppression and they had upliftment. And I believe that the Lord himself, you know, is not going to come from heaven. He's committed it into our hands. And we will do all that it takes so that we'll uplift our people in Jesus' name. And uh, the people who had been depressed by the grace of God, there'll be deliverance instead of depression. And the Lord himself, as he used Moses and the ministers of days of old, in that same way, he will use every one of us. And if we have been looking around and we're asking who will come, and deliver our people who will come and lift them up from where they are spiritually, politically, 
financially who is coming to deliver and the lord points to you and says you are the man you are the woman instead of looking at other people to do what you are not willing to do instead of calling for other men and other women to come from outside and do what you are not willing to do don't we have the same god and the god who is going to use them can't he use us is going to use us in every community and in everywhere where we are we can give ourselves and say lord here i am i surrender all i surrender all so that you can use what i have he used what moses had and he said what's that in your hand he said it's a rod he said throw it down you know the story pick it up again take that rod with you what god will use who god will use is ready in our land and it's in your hand and the way the lord used others he will use you in jesus name as we go on our journey and we're talking about excellence excellence in life excellence in ministry we come to a particular point today i'm talking to you on the exceptional ministry of turning bitterness into sweetness look at the panoramic view the broad view of the life and the ministry of moses it took them from bitterness to sweetness it took them from slavery and, it, and they became a master nation it took them in the rural community of egypt oppressed by egypt and it made those people a militant set of people all over the world even till now uh, people still know countries still know the place of israel in the nations among the committee of nations and it came from this man and the lord raised him up the lord will raise you up and he turned bitterness into blessedness the exceptional ministry of turning bitterness into blessedness would you please remember that every day you wake up you say today anywhere i see bitterness i will not make it more bitter but i will transform it and turn it from bitterness to blessedness we're looking at exodus exodus chapter 15 and i'm reading from verse 21 exodus 15 reading from verse 21 miriam answered them sing ye to the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea and now in verse 22 they went from the singing and here is what happened so moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of shore and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water look at verse 23 in verse 23 and when they came to Mara they could not drink of the waters of Mara for they were bitter for the waters there were bitter they went to that stream it was bitter and they went to that outlet it was bitter they went to that brook it was bitter they went to this other river rivulet and it was bitter everything they saw there was bitter therefore the name of it was called mara in verse 24 it says and the people murmured against moses saying what shall we drink there is um, it's easy to solve a problem that is far away outside there it's easy to come out of egypt and overcome the external power and the external domination 
of Egypt over them. They had conquered that and they sank about that. Now it's an internal problem. Pharaoh is not here. You know, some people say, you know, Adam caused our problem. Adam caused our problem. If they suffer, if they sweat, anything that happens, Adam, Adam, Adam is gone. It's now in our hands. Apart from Adam, leave Adam alone. Leave him in the hands of God. Now Pharaoh is gone. And the chariots of Egypt, they are all gone. They are all drowned in the Red Sea. What's our problem now? It's between ourselves. It's not a Pharaoh causing us any challenge, any problem now. The external problem, we can settle that. The internal problem that we had. And it says they murmured against Moses. How is it they just turned around like that? And they had this civil problem and so international problem, you know, all that would easily overcome them and they were asking what shall we drink we can ask that without murmuring we can ask that without complaining we can ask that without fighting we can ask that without any violence moses our leader what shall we drink and you know languages uh, just a sentence alone doesn't convey much the tone the attitude, the look, the body language. As they came to Moses, you could, you could tell how they really acted. And what shall we drink? And then look at verse 25. In verse 25, and he cried unto the Lord. He didn't call the people names. He didn't fight for them. He didn't say, you've come again. This is what we're saying. We came to deliver you out of the land of Egypt. And look at your bunch now. No, he cried unto the Lord. Our problems as leaders, sometimes we talk to the people too much. Apart from preaching, after the preaching, then we leave the preaching and lash the people and cut the people and criticize the people. You terrible bunch and you sinners and you backsliders. You know, if it were not for the calling of God, I will not be in your midst at all. And then we begin to recount, see what I left and see what I left, see where I'm coming from. I abandoned everything and I'm ministering to you and you people are not responding. We spoil our ministry. We destroy our lives when we turn away from God and then we begin to talk to the people. And he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. Why are you looking at the people? Revelation will not come. When you are fighting with the people, revelation will not come. While you are, you are ruffled and you are disturbed, and everything you can think about in the night, while you before you sleep, you are thinking about this bunch of people, these terrible people. And these people, they are ungrateful. These people, stubborn people, before you sleep, that's what you are thinking about. And then after you have gone to sleep, in your dream, you see what you are thinking, you will see. And then they begin to fight you. Then they put something under my chair, and they put something on my table. And you see, now God is showing me, no, it's your mind that is showing you that. And then you wake up morning and you begin the fight again we don't carry ministry like that but when he cried unto the lord he spoke unto the lord the lord revealed a tree to him the tree had been there all the time man had been bitter all the time and nobody ever connected the tree with the marrow with the bitter water but came and Moses saw that tree which when he had cast into the waters. Now the Lord showed him a tree and said nothing. He just saw and said nothing. Many people when they see and they don't hear they don't act. But Moses Moses knew this tree and the Lord is revealing that to me now. I know what to do. When your time comes, you will know what to do. And when you do that thing, bitterness will turn into.
into greatness in Jesus' name. And the waters were made sweet, not part sweet, part bitter. The river, the brook, the streams, the rivers, every part, all the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute. And an ordinance, and there he proved them. Verse 26, in verse 26, and said, If thou, Moses, are you not going to complain about their murmuring? God, he didn't send me to do that. Are you not going to talk about their complaining and just saying, the attitude? No. If God wants to give them a covenant. What God wants to say, that's what I say. What he wants to do, that's what I do. And we must touch Yesterday that happened, the other time this happened, the other time this happened. All has now, God wants to make a covenant with them and say, If thou wilt diligently begin to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that with his right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none. Of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. I thought somebody would say, I want you to begin to think now. The diseases all over Egypt in our world. The diseases, what do we see the diseases in our world? If you go to the hospital and visit every ward, you will see. The diseases in our land. Where do we see the diseases of Egypt? The diseases of the world. If you travel around, go to every village and go to every town, you will see the diseases of Egypt out of the land. And God said, If you were hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will deal. To his, uh, to his, uh, he said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians. And when the Almighty God said, I will put this upon you. Now think, if Satan tried to contradict God, God is not going to allow that. He says, God says, you're not putting what I put it on you. What's the meaning of that? He wants to prove God a lie. Now God said, I will not. And then he will. He can, you cannot prove God a lie. Satan cannot put on you what God has forbidden to be on you. And then he will say, you know, there are powerful people, maybe a lie. And he said, you're an Israelite. You are the chosen of God. And God said, I will put this on you. Then the same thing will put that on you. Which God said, He will not put on you. They want to prove God weak. They want to say, God said, This will not come. But they are more powerful than God. And He will put that on you. It will not happen. When God says no, nobody can say yes. When God says, don't cross that line, my son is there, my daughter is there, my people are there, and I don't want to carry all your evil things, diseases, and go lay it on them. You have people under your control, under your jurisdiction, because uh, Satan is the God of this world. You have enough people under your jurisdiction, whatever you want to put on them, but these ones, you cannot touch them. And you come to such a covenant place today that what God said will not be on you, will not be on you. And then he said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. God, I 
don't understand. You said you will not put this on us. And then you say again, I am the Lord that he lets you. What he means is, should in case you have carried anything as a baggage of disease from where you are coming from, I am the Lord that he lets you. And so there's healing on the one hand, there is health on the other hand. You see, the health care of the Lord is not only to heal you because you are sick, but it's to keep you well. It's to keep you healthy. Can you live one week without sickness? Answer. Can you live one month without sickness? If you can live one month, can you double that and live healthy two months? Yes. Can you live half of the year without sickness? Yes. How about one year? Yes. How about the rest of your life? Yes. Your expectation is your realization. Yes. If you say, I know God can. I know God will. I know God is going to be faithful. He'll be faithful to you in Jesus' name. And then we come to verse 27. Verse 27 says, And he came into Elim, where were 12 wells of water. Look, the mist, a chance there, one Mara. And after one, Mara, and it was turned to sweetness, then it came now, 12 wells of water. Maybe of the 12 tribes, your tribe of Ephraim, that's your well. And Manasseh, that's your well. Reuben, that's your well. Everybody now has the well that will bring satisfaction. And then it says, and three score and ten palm trees. And they encamped there, tell me, by the waters, by the waters, the joy now has come. And the blessedness has come. And all the things of the past, everything now taken away. You know, a turning point is coming in your life. Turning point coming in your ministry. And what you missed before, and it appeared there was bitterness there, the Lord, by his power, and by the tree that he reveals to us, will turn everything to sweetness. As we look at this, the exceptional ministry of turning bitterness into blessedness. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the bitter water experiences in the congregation. In our congregations, in the congregation of the children of Israel, they had the bitter water experiences. And in our congregations today too, as the, you know, the people come, they come for prayer, they come for turning around, they come for provision, they come for prosperity, they come for happiness, they come for reunion of their family members. They have bitter water experiences in the congregation. Point number two, the blessed wondrous exchange through the cross. The exchange that it takes the bitterness of your life and the bitterness of your ministry and the bitterness of your existence. And you have been wondering, why am I alive? And why am I in this land? There's going to be an exchange this morning. The negative will pass away and the positive will settle in your life. The blessed, wondrous exchange through the cross. Number three, the better will. Better, now better. I said better, now better. Uh, if you look at those two words that I just gave you now, Bitter, you're right, that. And just beneath that, you're right, better. And as you look at that word, B, B, they're the same T, 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 they're the same E, E, they're the same R, R, they're the same. There's only one letter there that is different. Between bitterness and a better stage, 
only one letter I. When your life is occupied with I, I am weak. I'm done for. I am finished. I'm oppressed. I am depressed. I. When you center your life on the I, bitterness, you'll be crying all the time. Change that I. Replace that I with E. Emmanuel. God with us. And you see, it's no more I that liveth, but Christ, Emmanuel, dwells within me. When the I in your life, when the self-centeredness of your life, when looking inward all the time, when you replace that, and Emmanuel takes place, in your on the throne of your heart everything will change where the people delaying the blessedness and the better stage in our lives because we don't separate ourselves from the i i i but when you say enough is enough that today emmanuel will be enthroned in my heart he brings salvation he brings healing he brings deliverance and he brings authority that nothing will be able to conquer you anymore in jesus name the better will expressed in the covenant let's look at number one number one we're looking at the bitter water experiences in the congregation we have read already that chapter 15 verses 21 to 27 so i'm not dividing this to three parts we're looking at number one miriam's music of triumph before mara number two multitudes murmuring on the trial at maram number three moses ministry of trust beyond maram moses ministry of trust beyond mara let's look at number one number one is miriam's music of triumph before they got to Mara. Look at Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. That's what Miriam sang, and that's what all the women sang, and that's what the men chorus, and they said, Our God is glorious in power. Look at verse 11 there. Verse 11, who is like unto thee, O Lord, upon among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders doing wonders the point is we we'll sing it on sunday the lord shall provide god be with us standing on the promises we'll sing that on sunday when we cross over to monday in our places of work we leave the song in the church we leave the provider in the church we leave the promises in the church and instead of doing what was said on sunday and we said on sunday that we stand on the promises we now sit in the premises now this is not church god is in church here is uh, where you have problem and i will sit there in the premises of our problems we we'll sit down there mourning and complaining and saying you know director like that master like that that one how about what was sung yesterday take your music from the church to the working place take your music what you sang take it to the place where you are there on monday is god great say it on monday say it on tuesday have that mind during the week that it is not 
just on Sunday that we have the song, we have the doctrine, we have the excitement, we have the worship on Monday through Saturday. Let the same song, let the same promises ring from your heart and let the faith you had on Sunday, let it show during the week otherwise, your week days i mean monday tuesday until saturday weekdays will become weekdays w-e-a-k that is during the week if you don't take those promises and stand on the promises if you don't take those promises and supplicate and pray on the promises the music on sunday will die and then during the week you're barren and you're in the wilderness again but joy every time happiness every time happy day happy day it's not only sunday that is happy day where the lord is and when the lord is with you monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday or saturday if the lord is with you there happy day every time at home happy day with your family happy day what makes the day happy whether you think of i or you think of E. Emmanuel. Whether you live only with I, bitterness, or you live with Emmanuel, God with us, anytime, once the E is there, permanent and present in your life, it will be a happy day in Jesus' name. And so they sang, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises and doing wonders look at that look at verse 18 now in verse 18 it says the lord shall reign forever and ever yeah. i thought there'll be a good global amen yeah. now israel the children of israel what did you just think now we're still in the same chapter we're still in the same week was still in the same month was still in the same year and you said the lord shall reign forever and ever here is manna remember that even at mara the lord shall reign forever and ever even over the waters the lord shall reign forever and ever even in your bitter situation it's going to rain over that bitter situation. Whatever you are saying about God at this moment now, carry it on, carry it forth, and carry it forward. And still remember that wherever you are, whatever happens, and whatever does not happen, the Lord, my God, will reign forever and Ever. And now we come to verse 20. In verse 20, it says, and Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Now, the dances there is not a man with another man's wife. The dances there. You know, some people say, What are these people preaching? And uh, why dancing is there in the Bible? Of course, of course, the women those women they went out with timbrels and dances it's not it's not the pastor throwing the buttocks in the front of a of a lady in the church that's not bible that one is lost a man is looking for another thing it's not uh, you know a woman before a man and the top line of the dress is so loose and when she bends down like this you can see all the things within and they say they are dancing man to woman and they do that in the night vigil and they do that everywhere and they say that you know we were, were honoring the lord they said let everything you praise the lord well, the shaking of your body and the buttocks and everywhere let everything that has breath praise the lord and there's lost 
and there is evil in the church the dances here is the women and the women were not throwing any buttocks they were not you know doing anything bodily that will distract anybody they we need to understand the word of god so that we'll set everything aright so that immorality will not take hold of our churches in jesus name look at verse 21 there verse 21 it says and miriam answered them sing ye unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea that's the music and the lord has encouraged us are you happy sing and uh, even when you are not happy sing and all your disappointments and all those evil things everything will pass away in jesus name i come to number two now number two multitudes murmuring under trial at mara multitudes murmuring and it says under their trial at mara why should god allow mara to come in their lives because he knew the tree was nearby he only wanted to see after their singing what will be their attitude he wanted to see after the temporary denial that they couldn't have what they wanted to have what will be their attitude he stationed the tree there it's just like abraham abraham here am i lord take your son your only son whom you love and sacrifice him to me on the mount i will show you all the while god stationed a ram there that will be for the sacrifice abraham did not see that and these people did not see the tree when you get there after the lord has proved you after the lord has tested you and you passed the test then he'll say look at that tree there i'll show you what will bring solution to your problem when you don't cry because of the problem you are not giving up because of the problem you are not turning back to egypt because of the problem remember the tree is always there and at the right time the lord will show you <clears throat> we're looking at exodus the multitudes murmuring on the trial at mara in exodus chapter 15 reading from verse 22 so moses brought israel from the red sea and they went out into the wilderness of shore and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water and then in verse 23 it says and when they came to mara they could not drink of the waters of mara for they were bitter therefore the name of it was called mara look at verse 24 it says in verse 24 and the people murmured against moses saying what shall we drink murmuring starts from the heart from the mind again whenever anybody murmurs is looking at something here on earth that displeases him or her anytime anybody murmurs is looking at something at the water at the plate of food it's looking at the face of the woman it's looking at the face of the man it's looking at the situation it's looking at something here on earth that displeases him or that displeases her he's not looking at god emmanuel that pleases us that delivers us that gets us out of the problem is looking at something here on earth and it starts from the mind 
And he looks at another person who has a similar attitude in her heart. And the murmuring can communicate one with the other. And then this uh, community is also looking at that community. Are you seeing the same displeasure as we are seeing? Yes. And then they communicate mind talking to mind spirit talking to spirit and so the murmuring will be spreading and now it goes from just the heart it comes out of the mouth we call that grumbling grumbling and then with a kind of guttural voice where you know grumbling because of the murmuring already in the heart and uh, you know we're just grumbling we're not able to look at anybody now but we're just you know grumbling and saying you know why this and why that this displeases me and that displeases me he makes himself the center and it's at the center of the state the people who grumble and the people who murmur, they are the center of the universe and the world is rotating around them. They cannot see the need of anyone and they cannot praise God for anything at all. Murmuring, murmuring, murmuring. From murmuring to grumbling to complaining. That's why when they now bring the whole thing out, it's not just that we're murmuring in our mind or we're grumbling, you know, to people. But now we come out. It's like revolt. It's like a rebellion. And then we now complain and we begin to point fingers. And everything, we're sweating, we're shivering, we're angry, we're bitter. And the bitter water goes from where it is and then comes within the heart, murmuring, grumbling, and complaining. And they said, what shall we drink now, brothers and sisters, fellow ministers? Murmuring never stopped, solved any problem. And grumbling never solved any problem. And the complaining never solved any problem. Even the people who complain, they know they're ready for fight. They're not ready for solution. They're ready to tear things apart. And everything within them is not in the stage of praying in faith. Everything within them, the people who murmur and complain and grumble, they, they're not in the stage where they can hold on to the promises of God. They're too much entrenched in the problem. I pray God will help us. You know, when you relax and you step back and don't allow Mara to get into you. After all, it's not drinkable, that water. And when you allow what is undrinkable to get into you, obviously, it's going to bring a result that you wouldn't be able to manage. But you step back from that Mara, and you step away from that Mara, and say, that Mara will not twist my tongue. That Mara will not affect my heart. That Mara will not poison my personality. I step back. I am still who I am. If I'm not thinking about Mara, who do I think about? I think about the mediator. I think about the Messiah. I think about the one that has seen that those problems will come. And it will, and it will provide a solution. And it is that that helps you in life that you are not concentrating on the bitter thing you are not concentrating on the bitterness of life on the bitterness of mara you are concentrating on the provision of the messiah the provision of the mediator the provision of the one that has come and he came to show you and to give you the miracle of mercy from the lord and it will come in jesus name Amen. now it says in uh, chapter 10 of first corinthians chapter 10 of first corinthians it says from verse 5 but with many of them 
God was not pleased. Well, please, why? God is not pleased with murmuring. Why? God is not pleased with grumbling. Why? God is not pleased with complaining. He wants our lives to be peaceful, to be quiet, without any bitter words, without any bitter utterance coming from us. Because when there is murmuring and grumbling and complaining, God is not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness and then it says in verse 6 look at verse 6 there it says now these things happened or this is what our examples to the intent for the purpose we should not lose after evil things as they also lost it. And then in verse 7, it says in verse 7, Neither be ye idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. Then in verse 8, it says in verse 8, Neither let us commit fornication, never. It says, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand verse nine tells us it says neither let us tempt christ as some of them also tempted and they were destroyed of serpents verse 10 now says neither momo ye it will come situations will come in life situations will come in the family situations will come in the ministry situations will come in your profession situations will come in your office situations will come it will come any day any day especially the days when you are not praying the days when you are not looking at the promise of god the days when you're not aligning your mind to the mind of the almighty and to the mind of Emmanuel, those situations will come uh, that will pull you to murmuring and grumbling and complaining. But it says now that we're in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, it says, Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. The Lord wants to take all that murmuring out of our system, out of our habit, and out of our life. And when the Lord makes you not to concentrate on yourself, what I like, what I don't like, what pleases me, what does not please me. When God takes that out of your heart and the center of your life is not the I, it's God and God alone, all the murmuring will stop. Amen. Your family, Amen. your place of work, Amen. your local church, and in the church at large and in our community, look. That community murmuring and grumbling and complaining and that community that every time everything around us pushes us to murmur to grumble and to complain when god takes that away first there's peace in our heart there's calmness in our soul and uh, to start life again uh, like it was last week like it was last month like it was last year that it was last decade all those things everything uh, will come down and the lord himself will help Missed in Jesus' name. Now, in verse 11, in verse 11, it says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are reaching for our 
admonition, our instruction. They reach in for our influence. They reach in so that what happened to them will not happen unto us. They reach in for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It says the people did not have the grace of God until the ends of the world. They still be murmuring and grumbling and complaining. The sin didn't solve any problem yesterday. Today they still come there murmuring and grumbling and complaining. And the, the problem is not solved today and tomorrow. It's like we're walking on the same road. We're doing the same thing. We're practicing the same mourn, murmuring and complaining and grumbling. And it is not solving any problem. And yet, we do not have the understanding that that thing that is not solving any problem, we need to stop it and look for a new way so that the way of love and the way of gratitude and the way of embracing the Lord all the time, whatever is happening, whatever is not happening, that way of praising the Lord the Lord will bring solution to our problem in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, number three here. Number three here is Moses' ministry of trust. At Mara, before Mara, at Mara, and beyond Mara. That's the ministry the Lord wants us to have. He wants us to have uh, a ministry that looks beyond the bitterness, that looks beyond the present situation, the kind of heart and the kind of mind and the kind of vision and faith that makes us to look beyond Mara. Do you remember the promises of God? Take them out of that country the country and the place and the land of bondage and take them to the land flowing not just with water but with milk and honey if you're always looking at that destination the lord said i'm taking them out of the place of bondage and i'm taking them to the land flowing with milk and honey mara will not stop you you know that's just a temporary bus stop and it's go not going to be your final end mara will not be your final end because Mara is not your destination. The place you are going is the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And so anytime you come across a Mara, say, I distance myself from that. That's temporary. That's not where I'm going. I'm going to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And Mara will pass away. And you will cross over. And so Moses had that attitude and he had a ministry of trust before mara at mara and beyond mara we're looking at uh, chapter 15 of exodus and we're looking at verse 25 exodus chapter 15 verse 25 and he cried unto the lord he knew that God is always there. And God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And so whenever any problem came, he always knew where to turn. Don't you know where to turn to get salvation? That's where you went. You went to the Lord. To be sanctified and made holy. That's where you went. You went to the Lord. To have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. That's where you went. Any other need you have. You already know where to go. Go there. Instead of standing here at the edge of Mara. And then you are sorrowful. You are discouraged. And you are depressed. Go where you have always gone. To get the power of God that will turn turn everything around in your life and every problem will be solved in jesus name he solved already the problem of sin go back there he'll solve the problem of sickness go back there he'll solve the problem of satanic affliction and so moses knew where to go i pray that we'll know where to go 
I said, well, nowhere to go. When uh, that road is rough, and when uh, this, uh, the mountain you are climbing is steep, and when it appears that somebody is not able to get to say, I know where to go. I know what to, at the foot of the cross, where he died for me. I go back there again. That's why I went and I had salvation. That's why I went and I had a supply. That's why I went and I have satisfaction. I go back there again. You'll have solution in Jesus' name. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Your waters will be made sweet. Your family will be made sweet. And your profession will make progress, will be made sweet in Jesus' name. And the things that have caused bitterness in your life, sorrow in your life, and the things that have caused a heartache in your life, everything will turn around. And then the waters were made sweet, all of them, all of them. And God was not just dealing with them one at a time okay test that taste that and see whether it's all right everything became all right in my life in my own life everything will be all right and the Lord himself because of that other tree which other tree the tree that he has shown us on Mount Calvary where Christ took all our sin, all our shame, all our sorrow, and everything negative away from our lives. It shows us that tree and that cross, and everything will be made sweet. And there he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. We're looking at um, Psalm 107, and we're looking at verse 12. Psalm 107, verse 12, uh, it tells us there, therefore, he brought down their heart with labor, it fell down, and there was none to help. He wanted them to know that there is no one that will help them except the Lord. And he wanted them, like Moses did, to go back to the Lord, and solution will come, and solution has come in Jesus' name. Now, when we have something, a challenge, a problem, that's likely to push us into murmuring, into grumbling, into complaining what shall we do let's see an example in acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 25 and at midnight it was the midnight of suffering they had been beaten and their backs were bleeding it was a midnight of you know when they could be asking why did i get myself all into this and so I could have been seen what was in the world and i could have a letter of authority to arrest any of these people nobody ever did this kind of thing to me but now instead of if you think like that the old good days they were better than these days if you think like that murmuring will start grumbling will start and complaining was about at midnight paul and silas prayed and sank praises unto the Lord. They were still in the prison. The doors were shut. The windows were shut. And the stalks were in their feet. But instead of murmuring, instead of grumbling, instead of complaining, it says they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Look at verse 26. It says suddenly. That's how your deliverance will come. That's how your solution will come. That's how all, all those tears will be dried up from your eyes in Jesus' name. It's in the midst of the singing, not just singing in church, singing in the prison. 
not just singing in church at the time of worship but singing when the lashes broke their backs and they were bleeding singing at such time is the singing we do at the time when everybody is mourning and murmuring and complaining and grumbling is the singing we do at such a time will open the way for every one of us in jesus name and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately all the doors were opened murmuring will not open the door of the prison grumbling will not open the door of the prison complaining fighting violence writing caustic articles in the newspapers and going over the radio and blasting the government that will not open any door and writing petition to this writing petition to that that will not open any door but when you come and you come with praises and you are singing to the lord and you say it could be worse but look at where we are and you are singing to the lord all your prison doors will be opened and it says everyone's bands were loosed it will loose and set us free in jesus name we come to point number two now point number two we're looking at the blessed wondrous exchange through the cross we're looking at exodus chapter 15 again and we're looking at verse 25 exodus chapter 15 verse 25 and he cried unto the lord and the lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them the blessed wondrous exchange exchanging the bitterness for the better stage of things in their lives and on their journey three things we're looking at look at number one the tree that turned bitterness to sweetness the tree he showed him the tree and that tree when he took that and cast into mara mara became sweet the tree that turned bitterness to sweetness number two the transformation of the bitter through supplication through the cry of moses unto the lord the prayer of moses on the lord the prayer that took the promises of god seriously through that supplication the bitter water was transformed number three our triumph over the bitterness in the soul our triumph our victory our overcoming power overcoming stature over the bitterness in the soul let's look at number one number one is the tree that turned bitterness to sweetness we've read that over there let's come to first peter chapter 2 and verse 25 first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says in verse 24 thank you who is who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree on the tree the tree that's the cross on the tree on the cross he bore our sins our shame our sorrow our suffering and the bitterness of our life the bitterness of the consequence of the life we had lived he bore everything in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins we are dead to those past things now shall live unto righteousness by the stripes ye were healed amen by whose stripes you are healed sickness brings bitterness the bitterness of regret 
the bitterness of is this i'm going to spend the rest of my life the bitterness of fear the bitterness of if i die now who will inherit and take all the things are provided the bitterness of looking at a bleak and dark future and not seeing any prospect or light there but because he our christ he our healer and he our redeemer died on that tree now by those stripes i am healed i am healed i am healed that healing will be yours in jesus name remember it's because of what he did on the tree at calvary we're coming to number two there number two there we're looking at the transformation of the bitter through supplication the transformation of the bitter whatever bitter experience whatever bitter taste you have whatever bitter situation you have whatever bitter family you have whatever bitter cola they force into your mouth and they say you must chew this one they say i don't like the taste it's too bitter for me they say you must take that life will be bitter for you the lord will transform everything because it's only the Lord that can transform the beta through our supplication the supplication that remembers the promise of god and will take the promise of god to the lord and say lord here is your promise here is what you said you'll do beyond that you have shown me the tree you have shown me the cross on which christ my savior died for me and because of that i believe in the transforming power of that cross everything today today at this time everything bitter in your life will be turned around in jesus name look at a person who changed the bitterness by supplication in first samuel chapter one and i'm reading from verse 10 for samuel chapter one we're looking at verse 10 it says in verse 10 and she was in bitterness of soul that's uh, anna she had no child not even to say to have a child who is going to be a prophet and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the lord and wept so prayed unto the lord and wept so she didn't accuse the husband give me a child or i die there are people that think that it's the husband that will manufacture the child and you know why am i married to you you're a man i'm also like a man there is nothing and they are bitter against the husband not anna and then the husband that got what the bible calls an adversary that is another woman that always tortured her and said okay the first wife first wife first wife position of authority they are the queen of the house and you know i came along i'm the one that is bearing the children and you are there she wasn't bitter against her no you're not bitter against any man she didn't look at her family and say what kind of family did i come from my father my mother and he talk about territorial spirits uh -uh. she wasn't bitter against any of the people the bitterness in her soul she went to the lord and laid a supplication before the lord that is what we need to do that whenever there's any challenge you're not looking at man you're not looking at woman you're not looking at ancestors you're looking you're not looking at territorial spirits you're looking at the lord calvary has paid it all christ has paid it all and the only one you are going to go to there's no other name given among men whereby we can be saved and whereby we can be transformed and whereby we can be healed and delivered it's just the name of jesus go to the source that will bring solution to your problem stop looking at man as if man is going to do the creation is going to do the transformation as if man is going to make your life better and sweet 
Look unto the Lord, all the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, and be ye healed, and be ye delivered. As you look unto the Lord, your situation will change in Jesus' name. The transformation of the beta through supplication. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, and Anna, she spake in her heart, only her leaves moved, but a voice was not heard. A voice was not heard. Not in the marketplace. A voice was not heard. Not even in the family gathering. A voice was not heard. And not among, you know, other women and the unfortunate one and you people, you all have your own children. The voice was not heard. Not even by Eli. The voice was not heard. There are some churches they give chance to, you know, people to ask questions when they do their Sunday school or their side of scripture and then somebody will rise up and say pastor i have a question why is it i'm saved i'm sanctified and you know i've been married now for this and, and then she begins to cry there my sister was the problem look at anna she had no child she didn't raise up her hand when they were doing the celebrations and the worship and then began to complain personally she went to the lord in prayer that's where to go to if we can just live a life that the voice of complaint and the voice of murmuring and the voice of grumbling is never heard and will really talk to the lord the solution will come faster than we thought your solution will come your salvation will come and your deliverance will come and the provision of the lord will come in your life in jesus name. but a voice was not heard therefore eli thought she had been drunk in look at verse 14 in verse 14 and eli said unto her how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And that was another chance for Anna to spark up. I have no problem at home. I come to church. And see what the high priest is saying. He said, I was drunk. This one does not have discernment. And then we begin to judge the minister. We begin to judge the preacher. We begin to judge the high priest. And that judgment will not bring solution to our problems. We need to understand we did that yesterday, did not bring solution. We did that the other week, did not bring solution. Why? Should I? continue in something that will not bring solution change be transformed look around and do something better and instead of doing it the way you did it yesterday answer with a soft voice because the soft voice will drive away all those concerns that we have look at verse 15 in verse 15 and anna answered and said no my lord my lord my lord what do you call your husband when you are sad sorrowful when you are happy what do you call her daddy honey are you there my lord my master are you there but when no child now what do you call her dry tree what do you call him mr so-and-so why do you change your language let love be in your heart love in the heart will never bring the language of hatred you see this anna while eli accused her and said you are drunk she said my lord i am not a woman i'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit i have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but i poured out my soul before the lord look at verse 16 in verse 16 count not thine handmaid i'm your handmaid for a daughter of belial for but for out of the abundance of my complaint not complaint to man and grieve 
not for man, advice, spoken, he that you. Look at verse 17 there. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Yeah. Now, if you were the woman praying like that, praying all your heart out, crying all your heart out, and the fountain of tears in your system just opened up and gushed out, and a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, a prophet, a founder, an overseer, the high priest, told you, drunken woman, Take that drunkenness away. And now, after I say, no, I'm not a drunk, a pastor. Okay, the Lord answer your prayer. I don't believe. The man does not have sight, spiritual sight. And the man does not have spiritual understanding. And everything he says, the Lord answer your prayer. And the Lord grant you your request. No, I don't accept. I'm going to go to somebody that has real anointing. He has anointing. God put him there. And when God has put him there, even though he thought you were drunk, that was his thinking. And after you explained, then he turned around and he said, the Lord make you go in peace. And you will go in peace when you don't have a mind that is judging the high priest. And the God of Israel grant thee that petition that thou was asked of him. And look at verse 18. In verse 18, and she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did it, and her countenance was no more sad. I pray that that same commitment and that same faith and that same heart that receives, you will have in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to number three there. Number three there is our triumph over bitterness in the soul. Our triumph over bitterness in the soul. I'm sure you remember the story of Job. Job had it all rough. In the family, curse God and die. Among his friends, you must be a sinner. That's, this, that's why this is happening to you. And himself, he even said, where was I born? He regretted the day of his birth. And when all that was going on, life was bitter. All the children gone. All the servants gone. All the crops burnt up. That's enough to make a person bitter and to backslide and to say, Christianity, forget about that. Serving God, forget about that. But he held on to everything he believed in God. God is a good God. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I know that he himself, he'll come and get me out of this, my brother, my sister, fellow minister, if that could be done by another person, and if they could have grace to stay, I'm still waiting for the Redeemer. He will come. We can have the same attitude, and the Redeemer will come in Jesus' name. Hey, look at look at Job chapter 3, verse 2. 20, wherefore is light given to him that is a misery and life unto the bitter in soul, bitterness in the soul. But the story did not finish like that. Your story will not finish where it is now. Bitterness will not finish your story. And all that, uh, you know, difficulty and tribulation and trauma and affliction will not finish your life in Jesus' name. Look at the end. Look at the end. You see, the problem is people don't get to the end. The end of the matter. The end of the book. The end of the chapter. The end of the experience. Don't just stay in the middle. What we see all the seas roaring and rough, go on, go on. As you get to the edge, everything will turn 
around. We're looking at chapter 42 of Job, Job chapter 42, and we're looking at verse 6, wherefore I uphold myself and repent in dust and ashes. I have concentrated on I, the day I was born. The thing that happened to me, I. And the things that my friends said about me, I. We concentrate on the I. And the self-centeredness will make a situation bitter and more bitter. But now he said, I uphold myself in dust and ashes. I repent in dust and ashes. And then you were looking at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Is still alive. It will turn your captivity. Yeah. It will change that bitterness. And it says when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Better days came for him. Better days will come for you. Yeah. Look at verse 11 there. In verse 11, and it says, Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been his acquaintance before in the past and did each bread with him in his house he's still at the house and they also they remembered they all of them bemoaned him and they comforted all him all over the over the evil that they thought the Lord had brought upon him. It wasn't God, it was Satan that brought that upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. Did the man die poor? Penniless, no. sorrowful, no. bitter, no. unhappy, no. regretting, no. you will not die bitter. Yeah. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had. 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, he had also seven sons and three daughters. Everything he lost, the Lord gave back unto him. Everything you have lost, the Lord will give back unto you. A transformation, a turning around, a new life, a better life than you ever had in your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let's come to point number three now. Point number three, it's the better will expressed in the covenant. The better will expressed in the covenant it tells us in um, in um, exodus chapter 15 uh, reading from verse 25 the latter part of verse 25 there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them then in verse 26 he said in verse 26 and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am. Never I was. There are some people that think the age of miracles has passed. In their mind, God was. But he said, I am. There are other people that transfer the healing to the millennial kingdom. 
and they say he will in the future they don't have the present faith in the present covenant the healing covenant and they say in the past miracles but for them not now they say in the future in the millennial kingdom yes healing and freedom but not now but the lord said i'm not the god that only was i'm not only the god that will be i'm the present help in time of trouble and he says i am the lord that healeth thee we're looking at three things here number one we're looking at the healing covenant of our faithful God. Healing covenant. It's a covenant. Look at covenant like a contract. A contract that, you know, there are conditions. And A signs and B signs. And this is the contract. And because of this contract, all the conditions and all the provisions of the contract will belong to each one look at the covenant like a marriage covenant you take this man as your husband and you're going to keep to him for the rest of your life for better for worse until this does part yes i do that is a covenant do you take this woman yes i do and the conditions there to care and to love and to provide and to protect all that is in the covenant the same thing with the covenant of god that he says i brought you out to bring you unto myself and because you now belong to me i have a covenant with you and all the provision of the covenant the lord will fulfill for you he will not fail if human covenants are kind of respected and honored the divine covenant that he has with you he will honor the terms the conditions and the provisions of the covenant in jesus name number one is the healing covenant of our faithful god number two is the holy covenant of a faultless god faultless and you cannot find fault with him because he has a covenant and is the holy covenant number three the highest covenant of our father god the highest covenant countries make covenant with each other nations make covenant with each other and communities make covenant with each other and fathers of uh, tribes make covenant with each other like jacob and laban you'll not cross over to come and do evil unto our tribe will not cross over to come and do evil to your tribe that's a covenant between a tribe and a tribe but the highest of all covenants is the covenant that god has made with his own people the highest covenant of a father god one number one now number one is the healing covenant of a faithful god in exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that healeth thee and if you are sick there today it will heal you in jesus name look at chapter 23 and i'm reading from verse 22 but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak hold on there are people that tell us nobody can live and not have a but in his life a but in her life that nobody can obey all the commandments of god and just be righteous and holy and then he obeys everything god has said who is telling a lie god or yourself 
God said that you will do all that I command you. You turn around and you see nobody can obey all the commandments of God. Are we going to accept what you say because you are a theologian? And then we forget what God has said, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Let God be true and let the theologian be false be faulty. God is God. And what God has said, that is the truth. I said what God has said, that is the truth. It can make us so obedient and so clean and so righteous that we're able to obey and do all that he has spoken. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Yeah. That's all your amen. Yeah. I'll take, you know, your lungs in the midst of you, your kidneys in the midst of you, and all your, your spleen and what you call appendix, everything inside you, one by one, and then you'll clear every part of your inward body. It'll take sickness away in Jesus' name. Yeah. From your eyeballs, from your ears, from your brain, from every part of you. That's what he promised. He'll fulfill his promise in your life in Jesus' name. He says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And then in verse 26, it says, and there shall nothing cast their young. Ah, I know somebody. She was also going to church and then she cast her young. No God, don't know somebody. Know the God who has promised that if you keep on looking unto him, and if your life is attached unto him, and if you're obedient to, unto him, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. And the number of thy days I will fulfill. You will live long. To the end of your time in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the evil spirits with his word and healed how many of them? And healed how many of us? I said, and healed how many of us? And healed all that were sick. Why? Verse 17. In verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Zion the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Number one, that is the healing covenant of a faithful God. Number two now is the holy covenant of a faultless God. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 72. Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Holy covenant. He has a healing covenant. He has a holy covenant. What does that translate to? Look at verse 73. In verse 73, the oath which is swear to our father Abraham. And then in verse 74, that he will grant unto us that being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Amen. Amen. Serve him without fear. Fear of the past 
all that is forgiven. Fear of the present is watching over you. And fear of the future. I will be with you. I will go with you. I will not leave you until I've finished and accomplished everything I promised you of the past, of the present, of the future. It delivers us from all fear. I was able to serve it. Fear of failure. And fear I may not make it. Fear I may drop before the end of the journey. Every kind of fear psychological fear, spiritual fear, physical fear, national fear. The Lord says he will deliver us from all fear. We are going to serve the Lord without fear in Jesus' name. And then in verse 75, here is the holy covenant that he has made. He said, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. He makes us holy. And actually, what makes us to do unrighteous things is not our hand, it's not our tongue, it's not our feet, it's our heart. What makes us to do unholy things and say unholy things is not the mouth, it's not the leaves, it's the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And when God purges the heart, sanctifies the heart, purifies the heart, and the heart is holy, the hands will do holy things. The feet will walk to holy places. You'll not have any desire to go to a place where you'll be defiled, where you'll be unholy, where you'll be unrighteous, and where you'll fall on your face and fall from grace to grass. When the heart is purified and the heart is made holy, you will do holy things. And he said, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. He will do that in every life in Jesus' name. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 3 there. It says, for this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification. Somebody said, I don't preach sanctification. You are not preaching the will of God. I don't believe in sanctification. You don't believe in the will of God. I don't ever dream that I'll be walking in sanctification. You're not dreaming the will of God. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. And then he tells us in verse 7, look at verse 7 there. He says, for God. God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. That is the call of God because of his holy covenant as the faultless God. He calls us to holiness. Number one is the healing covenant. Number two is the holy covenant. Number three is the highest covenant of our Father God. His Father God and his highest is the most high and the most high is calling us to something higher than human beings can dream with because he has the highest covenant from the father god in heaven look at jeremiah chapter 32 and i'm reading from verse 38 jeremiah chapter 32 verse 38 and they shall be my people and i will be their god they'll be in the place i am and i will be in the place they are i will own them as mine and they will own me as theirs there'll be such an interaction and there'll be a kind of interpenetration they live in me and i live in them and they shall be my people and i I will be their God. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. They will not turn back anymore. I'll give them a heart that doesn't have any interest in backsliding, any interest in turning back for the good of them and of the children after them. And then in verse 40, he says, look at this, I'll give them, I'll make with them, I'll make an everlasting covenant with them. 
the highest the highest covenant everlasting covenant of them and i will not turn away from them anytime they need me i'll tell them i'm here i'm here what do you want i'll do it for you what a covenant it says any need in your soul in your spirit in your body any need at present any need even among your offspring ask me i'm always there because i will not turn away from them to do them good to do them good the highest covenant that god said he will do good in your life he will do good in your family. Yeah. You turn to the right, goodness and mercy. Yeah. You turn to the left, goodness and mercy. Yeah. You move forward, goodness and mercy. Yeah. You get in touch contact with somebody, goodness and mercy. Yeah. You get to a new market, a goodness and mercy. And you get to a new fishing spot, a goodness and mercy. And you get to a new endeavor, goodness and mercy. You have bachelor's spinster, goodness and mercy. Now you just got married. Congratulations, goodness and mercy. And then you're expecting children, goodness and mercy, and then the work of your hand, everything that you do anywhere, everywhere, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell with him forever and ever in Jesus' name. He says, he says, he says, I'll put my fear in them, in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. A new covenant, a high covenant, they will not depart from me. I will not depart from them. Anywhere you go, he'll be there. In the day, he'll be there. In the night, he'll be there. Number one, the healing covenant. Number two, the holy covenant. Number three, the highest covenant. Everything belongs to you. Rise up and tell the Lord, praise the Lord, what a relationship we have that he has brought us into. That he says your spirit, your soul, your body, everything will experience the covenant of the Lord. An everlasting covenant, you ought to rejoice and you ought to raise your voice to the Lord. Leave the Mara bitter water behind and come to this new covenant of the Lord.